Hi guys, it's Eve and welcome back to my channel. I feel like I need to welcome myself back to my channel because it's been over a year now. Life happens, man. I don't I don't know what else to tell you. I am here today to talk about my empties. All the products that I've used up over the past two years now, I wanna say, about since I've moved into this apartment. I have saved everything, which is a feat, but I wanted to wait until I had the time to actually put it all together and talk about it. You might hear some fun background noises. That is my cat, Piper. If you saw my last vlog post of last year, you would have seen her as a kitten, but she's scratching a storm right now. I'm not shocked. So if you've been to my channel before and you've watched my empties videos, you might recognize my panda bag. All right, so the first thing I pulled out were two different setting sprays. This one is the NYX Dewy Finish. I would say that this is probably my tried and true. The NYX Dewy Finish and the NYX Matte Finish are are both really good in my opinion. As with most setting sprays, it is formulated with alcohol. So if that's something that you're trying to avoid just to avoid any sort of dryness, I would say pick something else, something that's a bit more moisturizing. But for combination girls like me or oily girls, this is beautiful. And honestly, the dewy finish doesn't feel dewy. It just kind of gives it a little bit of shine. I'm wearing it today. And then on my other hand, we have the Kat Von D Locket setting spray. I think this is the second bottle of this that I've used. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the actual form Formula, but the spray is a lot finer than most setting sprays. It's definitely more fine than the NYX setting spray. All right, next on the docket, we have a couple of concealers. We have the Too Faced Born This Way concealer, and then we have the Tarte Shape Tape concealer. I feel like Tarte Shape Tape is my tried and true. I've used it for years. Wouldn't be against trying something new, and that's kind of why I tried the Born This Way. Listen, the Born This Way tube is huge compared to Tarte Shape Tape. It's just, there is no comparison. It's giant. But what really sucked about it was that it oxidizes like crazy. I'm a pale bitch. I need something that's not going to turn yellow on me. And this turns yellow so quickly. Tarte Shape Tape doesn't oxidize on me. I still think that this is my number one. I got the baby. Can you say hi right over there? Say I'm cute. We got mascaras. We have the Stila Huge Lash. From what I remember, I liked the formula, but it wasn't anything to write home about. Somebody told me that it was a comparison for the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. I don't agree with that. I like the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara a lot, especially since I found that the Too Faced Better Than Sex holds up to like any sort of water. Like I wore this one in Disney World and even on Splash Mountain and the water rides, like it didn't run off. This one does kind of run a little bit. However, I do think that this is a lot better. And if you don't recognize this tube, this is Thrive's Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. I have this on right now. You can't really tell because I'm wearing fake eyelashes, but this mascara is my go-to for pretty much every day because it does make my lashes look ridiculously long. And it also helps thicken them too. I do think that there's a bit of a learning curve because if you apply too many coats, it does get a little sticky, a little spidery. You kind of have to wiggle it out and kind of just quickly brush it through. Then we have the Wet n Wild Lash Renegade Mascara. It was one of my favorite drugstore mascaras, but what I have an issue with is that Wet n Wild is no longer considered cruelty free. They were caught selling in China. And if you didn't know, China requires all international brands to test on animals before they're allowed to sell in stores. Wet n Wild and Physicians Formula both were kind of caught with that, which is really upsetting because there aren't that many cruelty free options for drugstore makeup brands in the first place. I'll try to find some new drugstore versions of mascara. I've just been using the Thrive Mascara and I've been loving it. These were some of my staples from Physicians Formula and Wet n Wild. We have the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. We have the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. It's one of the first bronzers that I felt was super neutral for me. And then we had the Physicians Formula Healthy Powder. This really wasn't a loss. I find that powder foundations are never light enough for me, but the bronzer and this foundation, both of these were staples. I will say I've switched over to CoverGirl for my foundation and I found that I do like the formula better. We have have a primer here. This is the NYX Studio Photogenic HD. This was weird. It does help control the oil, but it feels like it's shellac on your face. Like it has such a weird texture. It balls up really easily. I don't feel like my skin is able to breathe at all. And while I do like a primer to mattify and kind of mask my pores, I don't want it to feel like I'm clogging my pores to a point where I'm going to break out. If you have acne prone skin specifically, I wouldn't recommend. And even if you have dry skin, it clings to your dry patches like crazy. All right, so this is a fun one. I have the Stila 
Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow. I have mixed opinions of these. When I first got them, I was obsessed with them. I thought they were gorgeous. They weren't the easiest product to use, but they were so pretty. I know I had them for a long time, all right? I know that it probably wasn't supposed to last that long, but when you have so many eyeshadows like I do, there is no way that you're gonna be able to use these within a year, and they dry up and they become unusable. Even if you're someone who rarely wears makeup, I feel like you would run into that same issue where they would dry up before you're able to actually fully use them. There actually is quite a lot of product left in here that I can't use because it's too dry. From this point forward, I don't think I'm going to be ordering a lot of liquid eyeshadow just because of that reason. I feel like powder eyeshadows obviously last a lot longer and there's multiple ways that you can apply them to intensify the shine or manipulate how you want them to look on the eye. So yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a step back from that. And we have a couple of brow products. This is the pixie one. It works, but because it's a clear bottle, you could see everything that you put in there and I think that's kind of gross. But I will say that my Anastasia has a stronger holding power than the pixie clear brow gel. So if you're going to choose between one or the other, especially since Pixie isn't that much cheaper and it's a smaller bottle, I would definitely get the Anastasia. This brow product was really popular when it first launched. This is the Anastasia Dip Brow Gel. It's supposed to be a brow gel that has a tint to it, but what I would use it for is I would actually take the gel inside and use it the way that people use Dip Brow. This dried up really fast, and so I wouldn't necessarily recommend people buy this specifically, but Dip Brow. It's awesome and it lasts a really long time. All right, down to the bottom of the makeup category, we have the ColourPop Satin Finish. This one is in the shade Echo Park. I actually really love this shade, even though it's a bit too warm for me. The color does transfer, but it has longer staying power than a normal lipstick. And for that reason specifically, I would recommend this formula. Now we're heading into skincare. And the first thing I wanted to talk about is The Ordinary. And I have way too many of these bottles. So we'll start with these two. We have the Grand Active Retinoid 5% in Squalene and then the Retinol 0.5% in Squalene. I guess it just depends on how strong of a formula you want. Honestly, I couldn't really tell a difference. I do think that the Retinol 0.5% in Squalene works better for what I'm trying to do because I'm not trying to prevent wrinkles. I mean, I guess that's a perk, but I'm trying to use it to help treat my acne and help prevent acne. What I have three of here is Niacinamide 10% with zinc 1%. This is awesome for controlling oil and it's awesome for reducing redness on the skin as well. Really feel like my skin is under control. All right, and then I have four bottles here of the Ordinary's Hyaluronic Acid. This is the 2% plus B5. Hyaluronic acid, as far as I understand, is really good at drawing in moisture and retaining moisture. But for me having combo skin and even oily skin sometimes, having that moisture is really good with keeping that oil under control because it discourages my skin from overproducing. So if you're interested in trying a pure form of hyaluronic acid rather than relying on it being in your moisturizers, give it a go. I have completely used up one bottle of absorbic acid 8% with alpha arbutin 2%. So this is basically vitamin C. And one of the things I will warn you on is that you don't wanna mix this with the niacinamide. So I only use this in the morning. This is the first thing I put on my skin in the morning after I wash it. From what I remember, vitamin C is supposed to help with preventing aging, but it's also supposed to help with preventing from free radicals. It seems to be doing good things for my skin. My skin is in the best condition that it's ever been. I've got five bottles of lactic acid. So this is lactic acid 10% plus HA, and the reason why I have this in the most quantity is because this is the first ordinary product I've ever tried. It's a chemical exfoliant. It's a lot better for somebody who has acne-prone skin than any sort of physical exfoliant because the physical exfoliants can like break everything apart and spread the bacteria and that's that's bad. This specifically is the Mario Badescu Chamomile Night Cream. It's a very thick formula, but at the same time, it doesn't feel too thick, which is super important if you have like I said, acne prone skin like I do. I do like this product. I like how it's cruelty free. I like how it's somewhat affordable to me. I can't hold three at one time apparently. They keep falling out of my hands. I would recommend it if you have combination skin, maybe not oily skin, it might be a little too thick for that. Dry skin might like this too. And then another Mario Badescu product is the Mario Badescu Hyaluronic Eye Cream. I did stop using this for a while just because I heard so many people talking about how eye cream isn't necessary. While I do agree that you can use normal moisturizers for eye 
eye cream. There is something about this that is very moisturizing, but it also doesn't disrupt my makeup underneath. It actually makes my makeup look better, and I think that's why I went back to it. So I'm back to using it again. It is another thicker feeling formula, but what's great is that it does help reduce the look of my beginner fine lines. I'm 27. I've got some fine lines, but it also doesn't make my makeup slide all over the place. My last Mario Badescu product was a flop. Don't recommend this one. This is the Mario Badescu Facial Spray with Aloe Herbs and Rose Water. While this was super refreshing and it smelled good and I did find that it helped set my makeup without feeling kind of that like alcoholy tightness, I don't necessarily think it helped me with anything of my skin. And this is the Pixie Rose Tonic. I don't use any sort of toner anymore. I just don't find that it's necessary. I did used to use toners because I felt like I had to just to feel clean, but now I've gotten my makeup removing and my cleansing situation down, and I don't find that this was any way nourishing. So I would pass on this. This is Dermalogica's Pre-Cleanse. It's really good at removing makeup. You just take kind of like half a pump, rub it on your skin, and then emulsify it with water, and the makeup just comes right off so you don't have to do any additional tugging. Cleanses just as well as a balm. It's a lot easier to use because it's in an oil form. So cleansers! The first one is the Dermal Clay Cleanser. I liked the experience of it more than I liked the results. So it has like menthol in it. So it feels really cooling on the skin. It felt really refreshing in the summer. The experience is a lot better than the actual cleansing. For cleansing, I would recommend Dermalogica's Special Cleansing Gel. I've been using it for such a long time. It's super gentle. I find that it does doesn't irritate my skin either, so that is A++. Alright, so this is the last item from Dermalogica, and this is the Dermalogica Active Moist. This was an interesting moisturizer, and surprisingly more product is in this tube than you would think. Like, it actually does last quite a long time, but I found that this specifically for me didn't moisturize my skin all day. If you have really oily skin, this might be a good option for you because it's not too moisturizing, but it does moisturize a little bit. Holy crap, that was a very long video. Thank you so much for sticking around, especially if you stayed all the way till the end. If you have any ideas on what kind of videos you want me to do, let me know because I miss it. I'm just really glad that I feel comfortable enough to be back on camera and to be doing what I love. Like I said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and if you like me, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. But until next time, have a great day. Get some rest, drink some water, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye guys! Oh,